Well, we're now being joined by Mr. Emeka Ingige, who is a senior advocate of Nigeria. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you, Martha. Well, quite a lot of steps being taken in, re in the past few weeks in the judiciary. Some of them have been called quite bold by uh, the chief judge of Nigeria. What are your thoughts on the steps that have been taken so far? For instance, the setting up of this committee uh, to review corruption cases and also the setting up of special courts on corruption. Thank you. Well, I must uh, give kudos to the Honorable Chief Justice of Nigeria for the well thought out step he has taken to complement the executive arm of government in the fight against corruption in the judiciary. The judicial uh, corruption is the greatest problem we have in Nigeria. You think so? Yes, it's the greatest because if the judiciary is corrupt, then all the fight you are doing elsewhere will come to nothing. So what the CJN has done is quite commendable, very thoughtful of him to have set up that committee to monitor the cases that are going on at the courts and at the court of appeal. The only issue is that uh, it may be limited to federal courts and FCT because this is where the, uh, the federal government or the executive arm are prosecuting corruption cases. I know they also prosecute in state courts, but uh, NGC uh, monitoring committee may have to work hand in hand with the CJ of various states in order to bring it down to all the state uh, courts across the country. Mm. So I commend the CJN for this uh, bold move he has taken. Which one of them precisely? Is it the special Both. courts? Or it's not the a special court. Uh, yes. Actually, what he did is to, that courts, at least one court, should be designated as uh, anti-corruption court. But I know that for federal high court, it shouldn't be one. They may have up to five or up to ten. They, must, they should have in Lagos Division at least five. In Abuja, five. In Porta Court, maybe two. And in other, uh, other divisions. How would this help? Because some people will say, is corruption such a huge problem that we're dedicating these courts? Why not criminal matters, for instance? I mean, by criminal, criminal I mean all the cases that do not necessarily involve like corruption. Like murder cases. Yes, like yeah. murder cases. Well, uh, those other cases, there have been practice directions issued kidnapping cases, murder, that they should be also be given a serrated hearing. But this particular one is that a, a judge is now designated to handle only corruption matters. You will not see that judge tomorrow dealing with bankruptcy or company winding up cases or dealing with the arrest of sheep. No. It's from Monday to Friday, the cost list will be cases on uh, corruption, EFCC cases, ICPC cases, and uh, other uh, security agencies. How does that help? I mean, It will help because uh, you have seen uh, the long time it takes for cases to be disposed of. It's one of the challenges we have. Uh, just last week, the Supreme Court was dealing with an appeal from one of these uh, commercial banks, now defunct, over the issue of uh, the uh, jurisdiction of Lagos High Court vis-a-vis -vis the Attorney General of the Federation instituting charges at the State Court. And the Supreme Court just ruled last week? Yes. Just like the matter said in 2011. So you could see the, uh, the time it has taken. So with this uh, 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 special court, because it doesn't apply only to trial courts, it also applied to the appellate courts. The CJN has directed that there should be designated days also in a week where the appellate court will hear appeals arising from uh, corruption matters. It's interesting that many lawyers we've spoken to commend this particular move by the uh, CJN and the NJC, uh, so to speak. But then everything that has a uh, has an upside, we definitely have a downside. What downsides do you see to this particular move? Well, the downside is that uh, other cases will suffer 
if you have a, a, an adrenal tumor maritime case or you in a federal high court or you have just any other regular case you will find that the number of judges that we're dealing with them may be uh, not enough so that still hasn't answered the question of uh, this scarcity or shortage of judges as the case might be yes uh, that's why the they need to increase the number because the number of lawyers are increasing. The population of Nigeria is growing. And yet, like the whole of federal high courts, the judges we have there, just about uh, 80 or 90. We need to have more than up to 150 of high court judges at the federal high courts. And in other states, in Anambra, they don't think there are more than 25 in the whole of Anambra. They need to increase. Lagos has about uh, maybe about 50. It shouldn't be so. But they need infrastructures to do that. They need money. Because you don't just appoint somebody as a judge. You need to give him a house. You need to give him a car. You need to give him a library, both at home and in the, in the office. So it takes money, too. It's money uh, capital intensive. In that regard, would you say that we are seeing the commitment that we should be seeing towards the judiciary, especially financially? It is not the, the problem of the judiciary. It is the problem of the executive releasing the money. For instance, I'll give you another example. The Federal High Court is building an office uh, complex that is uh, uh, a building that will contain about 30 courts in Lagos Division. That, build, that project is now stalled because the executive has not released the capital votes. And you now go to the Federal High Court, that is uh, the courtrooms that are being used currently. They are not more than a seat by seat, the size of the room. People stay outside, lawyers stay outside. You go in turn by turn as if you are going to watch a cinema because they cannot contain. But Justice uh, Aputu started the project, which was continued by Justice Aota, uh, about 13 story building at uh, Bodilon. But there's no money now. So that is where I was expecting the Bar Association to help the judiciary. They are members of NJC. They should talk to the executive arm, release the money for this court to be completed so that it will be befitting of federal high court. As I'm asking you, I say, are you seeing the commitment that we need to be seeing towards this uh, from, from whichever arm of government? Because we recall in the, very, in the early days of uh, President Buhari's presidency, one of the things he said was that the judiciary was his headache. Um, one would think that when that is the case, that they will, they will make every effort to ensure that um, whatever needs to be done to ensure smooth running within the judiciary is done. Well, they will do subject to availability of funds and not blame the executive totally because just yesterday we read that capital vote for 2017 budget is yet to be released because of lack of funds. So if there is no money, you won't also blame the executive arm for not releasing what you do for judiciary for their capital uh, projects. But I think that we must, since judiciary is on first line charge, like National Assembly, like INEC, they should be getting their own. INEC is getting money. They will do election in Anambra. If they don't, if they are not received, they will not be preparing for election. They have been doing, uh, they are doing a recall, recall that will cost money. It's because they are getting it on a first line charge. So I'm expecting that judiciary for the capital projects, from the little that comes in, that should be priority because justice administration is very key to our democratic process. It's, it's very important.